Hey, Blue Collar Ben here. Today we're gonna to be going over the things that you can check on your air conditioning system with no tools. If there are some aspects that I have more advanced videos on, I'll try to put a card up above or links in the description so that you can dig in and do more advanced troubleshooting. But we're just gonna go over the basics without having any tools. I've been a certified technician for almost 10 years and I work on air conditioners every single summer. So these are some of the common things that you can do yourself before calling a professional. One of the common issues I see is just a simple breaker in your panel that was turned off at some point during the winter and was just left off for some reason. So you should have a double pole breaker like this somewhere in your panel, typically gonna be a 30 amp and just want to make sure that that's turned on. Now obviously if you turn on your air conditioner and everything comes on, you know that's not going to be an issue, but if your air conditioner didn't even start, that's one thing to check. Another extremely common problem that we see is a blocked air filter. It's so simple, but it happens all the time. And what, what oftentimes happens is, the filter is dirty, it gets dirty, nobody notices it because nobody really cares about it, right? And once it gets dirty, the, it slows down the air moving through the furnace and moving through the coil. And then what happens is the coil gets super cold because there's not enough air from the house moving across it and eventually it drops below the freezing point. And since that coil is cold, there's been moisture accumulating on it because it's below the dew point of the air and it begins to freeze up. And eventually, you might even see ice accumulate on the outside of the ductwork. So if you had a really dirty filter and your air conditioner froze up, don't panic, there's probably nothing wrong. Uh, pull that dirty filter out, get yourself a new one. Buy yourself the cheapest pleated filter that you can get. A pleated filter has these corrugations in it, as you can see here. I don't recommend the fiberglass mesh ones, those are no good. And also, do not buy a really expensive filter. If you buy a Merv 10 or a Merv 12, uh, filter, they're gonna plug up super fast and when you put them in when they're brand new They have a higher static pressure that can cause issues uh, So just go with the standard pleated filter. So we'll slide our new air filter in here Typically your filter will have an airflow arrow on it So if you're wondering which direction it goes in on the furnace if it's a standard upflow configuration like this the return air is coming down this way and being pulled into the furnace right here so you obviously have your arrow pointing in that direction. If you have a digital thermostat, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it has fresh batteries in it. If you have a smart thermostat like this Nest thermostat right here, it has rechargeable batteries, so you will not need to replace them, but a lot of digital thermostats have regular batteries in them, and we probably go on three or four calls a year where the only problem with the system was that the batteries were dead. Because sometimes you can switch it into cooling mode, and it'll say that it's cooling, but it won't be because the batteries are too weak to close the relay in order to bring the air conditioner on. So just confirm that your thermostat is in cooling mode and that you have it turned down far enough to run the air conditioner. So we're out here with the condensing unit now, and a couple of things that you want to check before you turn your system on. According to my YouTube analytics, probably 90% of you that see this video will not be subscribed to the channel. If you want to see more helpful home improvement related and troubleshooting videos, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified about future videos. Some people cover their air conditioners in the wintertime, which is something that I don't necessarily recommend, uh, just because it can cause uh, the air conditioner to become a more welcome home for rodents and things to move into it. Plus these things are designed to sit outside anyway. Uh, but if it is covered, just make sure that the cover is taken off before you turn the system on or the air conditioner could be damaged. Right over on this side here, we have the air conditioner disconnect. This is a non-fused disconnect, so there are no fuses to check in here and it's also not a breaker. If this was a fused disconnect or if it was a breaker, you just wanna make sure that the breaker's not tripped and that one of the fuses is not blown. I will link to a video up here on how to check the fuses. Down on the side of the air conditioner where the lines come into it, you'll see that we have a larger line and a smaller line. The smaller line is the liquid line or the high pressure line. The larger line is the low pressure line or the suction line. So the suction line uh, should feel cold to the touch. 
and if the system is properly charged or close to being properly charged, uh, this bigger line should even be sweating. You can see here that there is moisture accumulating on the outside of that. So that's a good sign. That means that the refrigerant flow is working properly. If these lines are both about the same temperature, you know that there's probably an issue with the system. If this line right here has ice on it, it probably means that your A coil in the basement or wherever your system is, is froze up. And the likely cause of that is a blocked air filter typically, but it could also be a low refrigerant charge. In order to melt the ice off of that coil, the best way to do that is to turn the air conditioning off on your thermostat and turn the fan to on so that the air continues to blow and it'll slowly melt off that coil. And then you can replace the air filter and turn the system back on again and it'll probably be fine. If you find that there's no airflow and the filter is good, it probably means that you have a bad blower motor in your furnace. So I will link to how to replace a main uh, blower motor. Check to make sure that you don't have a dirty coil on your air conditioner. Basically what happens with the blocked coil is this whole coil is forced to run at a higher temperature. And when there's a higher temperature, there's a higher pressure in the system. If there's a higher pressure, it forces more refrigerant into the indoor coil, which in turn increases the temperature of the indoor coil. So you can have a system that's technically charged correctly that will not cool properly just because of a blocked condenser coil. So in order to clean that condenser coil, you just want to turn the power off to the air conditioner, either in the main panel or by pulling out the disconnect or turning off the breaker. And then you can carefully take a garden hose and spray all the debris out of the coil all the way around the outside of it. After you finish spraying out the coil, you can then turn the power back onto the unit. I run into a few service calls a year where the only issue was a blocked condenser, especially on, uh, on units where you can't see the coil. So if your fins are designed in such a way that you can't really see the coil directly, uh, a lot of times those ones get dirty and nobody notices it because uh, you can't see it unless you stand on your head next to the air conditioner and look up through the fins. If you come out to your outside unit and the fan is not running, but you can still hear the compressor running, likely it'll be super, super hot air coming out of the top. It means you most likely have a bad condenser fan motor. Or if the fan is running, but you can't hear the compressor running, that could mean that your compressor is either bad, or you have a bad capacitor, or you have a bad contactor. So hopefully one of those simple things got your air conditioner up and running. If it didn't though, I have a playlist right here of some really excellent troubleshooting videos to continue the troubleshooting process, or we'll have to get actually get out our electrical tester and do some continued diagnosis. So I will see you over there in just a few seconds. If you found this to be helpful, subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified about future videos. Thanks a ton for watching, and we'll talk to you right over there.